ethnic lines, religion, politics. Uh, they're just out there to have fun. Um, so you'll see there's a lot of young faces in there. Our target demographic is 21 to 40. Part of that is because your body hasn't quite fallen apart yet. Uh, part of it is because uh, probably about 60 to 65 percent of our, our folks are single. Uh, so they may have a little bit more free time on their hands. Not necessarily, but, but potentially. So that's there. But you have friends, uh, co-workers that want to get out and have some fun together. You have uh, individuals who can actually sign up and we put them on a team with other individuals. Um, that's team in the center, true story. Uh, the young lady on the right is Scandinavian. Uh, the other one of the gentlemen in the back is German. Uh, the guy on the far right is uh, he's originally from Japan. So in Augusta. So don't ever say you know that that's people are moving here. That's that's what's going on. And so luckily we've been part of that. And none of these are stock photos. This is all from Augusta Sports Leagues. Uh, so to give you an idea, that's that's what we do. And I do have all oh, without going too long. Um, I have a guy who's 59 who plays kickball with his three adult children. So they're they're out there having a good time. And I do I encourage folks because how many times have you gone to a park and you see the kids running around and you have got their parents sitting on the bench that are 100 pounds away. Uh, so I tell parents, your kids can give you one night a week to come out and have some fun and be athletic. And, and yes, you'll be sore the next two, three, four days. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'll, that makes sense. Just to give you a little bit of what we do, obviously you see some of the sports, uh, uh, around 11 sports that we offer right now. We are bringing pickleball, which is the fastest growing sport in the United States. Uh, I finally broke it down where I offer golf. I had enough guys to ask. I was like, there's enough golf around here, but no. Uh, disc golf, tennis, bubble soccer, we've actually done a tournament. We're bringing another one back. If you've never seen that, you put a big bubble and you run around and hit people while you're playing soccer. That's cool. yeah, so, yeah. Uh, all sports golf, uh, that's another one to explain later. Locations, we are all over the CSRA. Aiken County, uh, we're expanding into Columbia County. I'm mean, trying to get over towards Grove County in that direction. Richmond County, obviously, we have a lot of opportunities there. Sculptures, partners as well uh, in the area. I did not put the JBA, J Front Arena, and the uh, um, Augusta Green Jacks are also partners as well. So, um, how does ASL make money? Uh, what do we do in the area? Obviously, you all know about leagues already. Uh, there is also uh, festivals. We hosted the Augusta Craft Beer Festival back in late April, uh, partnering with the Augusta Green Jackets. Uh, had 1,700 folks, 1,700 plus folks show up for that event. That's our biggest yet. Um, so very, very excited about that. That's what we do. We bring adults together in the community. Uh, and, that's, and, and of course, we also introduce that community to the larger community, which is the CSRA. So whether it's restaurants, whether it's uh, just everything you can imagine. Four companies, uh, you'll see that green, that team in green, uh, Easy Kickers is the name of their team, so I'll give you one guess as to what company they're from. <laughs> so we do things for companies. We also do workshops, uh, field days uh, for the uh, AU uh, Medical School, we actually do a field day. So we're out there and they're riding adult tricycles around the lap track, you know, answering trivia questions in between. So we have a lot of fun with that. My background is actually in adult training and education. Uh, so we can actually tie that in based off a lot of the experience that I have and, and uh, also partnering with other coaches here and Stacy in the area to do things. Um, you'll see sponsors. That was actually, we were part, uh, so I'm part of the Support and Social Industry Association. Yes, there's a national association for what I do. Uh, and in that, we actually did, we broke the Guinness World Record for the most simultaneous high fives at one time. So that was a World of Beer back last November. We are doing another event this November like that. So uh, we have sponsors, sponsors that partner with us. Uh, they know we have a lot of young adults and want to move forward. And of course, the last thing is internally, you'll see everybody dressed in Snuggies because they are, uh, it's in December. And uh, actually, really one of the day, it almost got up to 60, so they can change clothes. But, uh, <laughs> that's what I love about Augusta. It can be warmer than winter, you can play. Real quick, uh, from February 1st of 2013, we went from a party of one uh, to now up over 5,000, about 5,500 members right now. Uh, active players, there's a difference between unique uh, members, which may, you know, you count them as one, or not unique, meaning they may play two or three sports. Uh, so with that being said, the reason that's a drop is we're only halfway through 2018, so that's why I didn't fall off the cliff. In fact, that should be much higher by the time we get to December. But uh, yeah, that being said, same thing with our gross revenues. Um, I will say this, the first two years I kind of messed around uh, and uh, I was doing a lot of other things and decided to focus on this. Um, and so that being said, we're very excited. Uh, like I said, with our events, our events right now are 20 to 40% of our income. Uh, so that means that we're going to be doing some more of those. Um, 
that's kind of how that goes. Where are we headed? Uh, so uh, we are actually expanding my team. Uh, if you met Pierre earlier, Pierre is my office manager there. He's in the back. So he's now my operations manager part-time. Uh, we are hiring a uh, part-time marketing manager, uh, which I hope to turn this into full-time. Uh, we are looking for a board of directors. Uh, there is this thing, if you've ever read John Maxwell's book, 21 Laws of Leadership, he talks about the leadership win. I know I have the challenges every leader does. Love to have a board to put together. So if you think you might be interested in helping us, whether it's marketing assistance, whether it's uh, direction, we are expanding. You see the CSRA out there. Uh, but also, uh, actually, in the next three months, we're going to be starting Leads Enforcement in Arkansas. Uh, and so that's an interesting story, which I can't get into here, but never thought I'd go there, but it's just too good an opportunity. Uh, and then obviously, I'm looking at some other places. Uh, VR, I know not everybody likes to get outside, so VR and eSports are also becoming huge. Uh, you can imagine, especially the cyber community here. So we're actually examining, looking at how to do those. And I think I'm the first lead in the country uh, that is actually putting something like that together for adults. So we're going to try to make that work. Um, with, you see the number six down there? We host one tournament a year. We're actually looking to host six. That means bringing people in from Atlanta, Charlotte, Savannah, Florida, et cetera, to come to Augusta and spend money and have fun. Uh, we do one big, huge, uh, major social event right now. We're looking to do four. That's kind of where we're headed. And that's just for the Augusta area. My friends that built the MAC down here, one of our biggest challenges is field space. Uh, most of the partial rec departments, uh, their primary focus is on uh, kids and youth. So they get the field space, bottom line. Uh, there's also a lot of fields in Augusta that don't have lights. We do adult flight in the evenings. So the idea is it's a challenge for us, especially in the fall, winter, spring, when we don't have a lot of light. Uh, these are my friends up in Raleigh, North Carolina. They just built this facility. You'll notice it has a sports bar. Uh, and real, uh, all that, and multi purpose fields so they can actually turn that from soccer into kickball and other things like that. So, the idea of a multi purpose field space that's not just dedicated to softball it can be used for six different sports. Um, one of these days, like I said, it's not, we're not there now, but uh, that's where we're headed. Um, that's about it, yeah, guys. Any, uh, so, that's what we do to build relationships. Um, I will say this adult sports is like herding cats. Uh, so there is a low barrier to entry for other people who think they want to do this. I usually give them about six months and they realize, wow, this is not worth it. Uh, you have to have a passion for doing this stuff. You have to have a passion. You saw that dirty little kid that didn't have a lot of friends. Um, my passion is putting people together. And that's the only reason. That is the reason why this is exciting. Yeah. So is, 
<clears throat> I noticed a lot of schools up there. Mm -hmm. Are those, are those, is that your focus of getting connections to more schools and parks? I, is, I guess I'm trying to figure out, is it parks and rec that you're going after? All of the above. Okay. Uh, I'll give you a great example. So the challenge, parks and recs, they have certain requirements and certain, some of them already have their own sports going on. Right. So they get first priority. Uh, some of them don't have lights in the field. So we really can't use those. I can go to schools. The challenge is, is some of the bureaucracy, they require both a janitor and a vice principal to be there. Well, that's 50 to 60 bucks out of, out of our pocket per hour before we even start. And then I have to triple the registration fees in order to be able to cover that. Yeah. doesn't work either. So, uh, and then, then there's also things where, oh, sorry, our football team is going to be using that one Sunday or one week out of the year. So, no, you can't use it. Uh, they're uh, keeping field space green. I mean, y'all saw the, uh, unfortunately, the Evans Concert Park that was destroyed. You know, and it's going to take two, three months. A lot of schools are concerned about damaging their field space. Um, so people are very sensitive about letting you use it, which is why the idea of building our own is so attractive. Um, but we will partner with anybody. Uh, what what they don't understand is that we are bringing adults. Um, the physical day school gets it. I am bringing adults to their facility. Um, they get comfortable with my facility. So when they have kids and they're trying to decide, hmm, where do I want to send my kids to school? You know, I, I'm not like over here at the EDS playing volleyball every night, every Monday night. I need to check them out and see if my kid wants to go to ES. They get it. The idea is we're not just a place to play, but that we actually bring real value to their facility. Uh, I was an Eagle Scout. Uh, I'm a big proponent of low impact camping. And so the idea is that you leave a place better than you found it. If you see a lot of these parks, when they go in, they walk out trash. And uh, I don't, that is not us. So I have, I have referees outside their job picking up trash after their games. Um, in the dark, uh, just because they, I know how important that is, and we want to make sure that we take care of our facilities. That's something else we do. I actually partner with some facilities, and the Parks Department won't admit this, but I will mow their fields for them when they can't get to. I don't tell them, I just do it, and you know, I haven't gotten caught yet. So, for, uh, <laughs> I, yes. So, the facility that we chose in mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, obviously, that's an expensive undertaking. Uh, how is that fun? So a couple different things. Um, one of the things they do is a no interest government loan. So the idea is they can get a loan because it is for beautification or improvement. So they'll do something like that, uh, get it on a 10 year term, uh, and then can move forward, you know, making payments um, as with the city or with the government as a partner that can get that no interest loan, uh, which is extremely valuable. Because like I said, it's not just for us. We can actually rent that out to other groups and use it and so forth. So not only is that an income stream, uh, but then obviously concessions and food, you know how that goes. There, there's some other opportunities there. But to to build one of those, your biggest cost a lot of times is lights. Believe it or not, if I wanted to take a field and put up Musco lighting, that's 100 grand uh, for a light system. And so that's why you see there's not a lot of lights in Augusta. Uh, but the idea is if I partner, for example, I've been talking with the rugby club. Uh, they have a facility over here. We've actually been talking, so we figured it out. 100,000 divided by 10 years, 10 grand a year. I pay five, they pay five, they use it on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I use it on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, and on weekends we decide who gets it because of who's got a tournament or league or whatever's going on. So that's what I would like to do. Uh, those are some of the partnerships that we're looking for because we're not an island, and like I said before, I just want this community to grow. And without going any further, two things. I've had, I had a gentleman who was an engineer at Bubble, uh, Plant Bubble, come up to me, and he's like, he, from the New England area moved down here for work. Uh, he's like, Keith, I would have left here two years ago had it not been for Augusta Sports Leagues. He said, I made some of my best friends here. I have stuff to do. I'm a single guy and I play sports two, three nights a week. Uh, and he goes, if I, you know, if I didn't have that, he goes, I would have moved elsewhere. Uh, I've had two couples that have met playing kickball and got married. So if I did nothing else, <laughs> I have They better stay together. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> But no, that, that, being, that being said, so as far as field space, uh, those are some of the ideas and the opportunities. Uh, we have donated to some softball programs here for some of the high schools in, in order to help, I don't know what's the word, uh, help them help us. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and it's, it's one of those things that we're happy to do uh, as long as we can make it work financially. We're going to do it to, to partner with people. Last question. Go ahead. So there's two things. One is, 
like there's this sigmoid curve on Earth, but it's textbook sigmoid curve in that you grow, you peak, you, you level out. Yeah. And, and sigmoid says in the growth is when you reinvent yourself in the S curve, and then you're always in the dust. Yeah. So I saw, I was like, whoa, man, where are you at in that? One. And then two, like five years, have you saturated all? I know you have a network connection, but like, where's the one that people don't want right, right now to pivot in the curve to go to the next growth? That is a perfect question. I'm, I'm, I bring that slide back up. And like I said, the year's not over, so that will. But it, you're, you're right. If you have that exponential growth and then it levels out. So, a couple different ways that, that we are working on that. Number one, uh, there's a huge trend where I'm seeing is that people aren't coming out to play sports be competitive, they're coming out to be social. So we're actually separating our competitive and our super social leagues. So for the ones that are large enough, um, there is a saturation point. If I have 5,000 members, I could probably in Augusta have about 10,000 in the entire CSRA that, that is, a, is a, so you know, I've got about 4,000 more to go and then I would level out. And so as many people as leave the area as move in, there's not any more to go. So in order to grow, it's like I said, it's the social events, it's, it's changing some of the offerings that we do, but it is expanding. It's, it's going to other cities. Uh, I've got five targeted uh, that either do not have programs currently. And what's funny is a lot of them are mid-sized. If you know anything about television and broadcasting, Augusta is a fourth tier market. I'm sorry we are. Um, the, we're a fourth tier market. Uh, somewhere like uh, even Atlanta, depending on which stat is a first or second tier market. Um, so that being said, a lot of sports leagues ignore that third and fourth tier market uh, because they don't see the margins. They can't charge $80 a person to play sports, uh, that kind of thing. And so with us, uh, I see an opportunity there. So it just takes putting the right boots on the ground to be able to grow like we have here. And since we've done it here, I'm confident we can take the third and fourth tier market and give them the same opportunities because they deserve it. But that's, that's where we're going to expanding, do some more events. Um, that's, that's really the way we keep growing and diversifying. Good, bro.